Hi, my name is Shahid Sanif Kandi. I am one of the selected for Pratt Scholars for 2011 and 2013 years studying at SIUE, Southern Illinois University at Roseville. All right, now in this opportunity, I would like to talk about how to be successful in applying for Bright Scholarship. Now this video is intended for my friends and my students who are in, in Indonesia right now. All right, now, there are several things that we might need to consider when we want to apply for a private scholarship. But before I want to talk more about this scholarship, I would like to say that this video is, did not represent, once again I told you, did not represent for bright uh, scholarship especially the U.S. Department of State, this is based on my own personal experiences when I applied for this scholarship. All right, now, the first thing that you have to consider when you want to apply the scholarship is the requirements. You can see and read the requirements in the application form, and you can download the application form through the website www.mnf.org.id. After you download the application form, you have to read carefully the requirements. Most of the requirements um, ask you to provide TOEFL IPT or TOEFL ITP institution institutional TOEFL prediction test and your GPA should be not lower than 3.0440 scale and two years experiences if you are a faculty or if you are teaching in Indonesia and several achievements or the most important thing is the study objective. All right, now after you see all of the requirements and you want to send your application form to MNF, make sure that you have completed every documents that are needed by MNF so that you could be listed as one of the prospective candidates for this Fulbright scholarship. Now, in my own experience, when I applied for the scholarship, I did not make it at the first attempt. As a matter of fact, I failed for the first time. But then again, the head of the MNF informed me that I could reapply if I'm still interested to join this program. Then I, I sent it again. In 2010, my application form was accepted. I was so busy in working as an English lecturer in College of Teacher Training and Education in Padang, Sumatra, so I had to say yes because I have to go to master's degree and this opportunity is really great to study in the United States, especially English is my field, therefore studying English in English-speaking country would be a great deal. Then after, now let's say you have sent your application form and then you are selected to be interviewed one of the candidates for the Fulbright Scholarship recipients, then you go to the interview session. When you are in the interview session, the most important things that you would like to mention is the honesty. You have mentioned everything that you have in the application form now in the interview session the panel will ask you different questions which are related to your study with yourself and with your background as well as why you want to study in the United States. There will be four people in the interview panel. Two of them are from the United States and the, the other two are from Indonesia. And these four people will ask you different questions which are very important for you to consider, but I'm not going to tell you these questions because every individual applicant will have different types of questions addressed by the interview committee. But one thing for sure is that when I was being interviewed by interview panel, I answered the questions honestly, as honest as I wrote in the application form. So everything I mentioned in the interview was completely based on my own reasons why I would like to apply for this Fulbright Scholarship. Then, after you 
attend the interview session, you will come into the TOEFL IBT and GRE. TOEFL IBT is pretty tough. You have to reach score at the lowest is 80, and the GRE is pretty tough as well. You have to prepare for these two, the two tests, TOEFL IBT and GRE. But in my case, if you could not fulfill the two scores, it depends on the MNF and IIE. If they want to give you another chance, they would give it so. But if you do not have, I mean, a very low score, which are going to be seen as impossible for a prospective candidate to study in the United States, then your opportunity to enter the next stage would be over and would be gone. But, but anyway, in my case, I did. I put my great efforts to get the two tests and to give a great score. And I had to wait for about three months after that, and there would be submission list. And Aminev informed me that I'm going to be matched with five universities in the United States. So one of them is going to select me based on the preferences and based on the requirements and academic credentials that I have as an applicant. So these two things are different. First, you have to get this Fulbright scholarship and then you have to be admitted in the university as well. Even though you get the Fulbright scholarship but you were not admitted by one of the universities, then your chance to continue this Fulbright scholarship will not be there. But most of all, students who receive this Fulbright scholarship, they are selected by the, by the university. So it's just a matter of choices. Now, when you come into the TOEFL, IBT, and URE, just make sure that you do practice and do your own best. And the most important thing is honesty, preparedness, and integrity. So these three things are very important for you to consider when you apply this for the scholarship. And the other thing is that this, in my understanding, this scholarship is not about money. It's about how you engage with academic courses, how you engage and connect with students from other countries, from international background, so that you could represent your own country with its, um, you know, differences, particularities that people who come from other countries might not know. That's what I did. There was uh, one of the bazaar. I I did that with Ruth Sumule. Hey Ruth, thanks. So we did, and there was international night, and we also performed Indonesian cultures. Even though what we did was not considered as a full Indonesian cultures, no way. Just one tiny little thing of Indonesian cultures, but that's what we did. Then, if you are selected, congratulations and keep doing great for your own studies. Remember, remember one thing: focus on your studies first, your GPA, your studies. You are considered as a smart student, so what that means is that you are going to be uh, able to end your study well, your GPA. This is only for one year, this is the first scholarship. It's renewable. If you have bad score, you will be given a chance for another year. But if you are still having a bad score, you will be reported and your scholarship will be stopped. So you have to consider that very carefully. The second thing is that you are not going to work while you are in the United States. So this will buy a scholarship if enough for you to study, do research, and oh, like me, I I attend a conference because I was invited and my abstract was accepted by the county and the university gave me travel grants, which is very great and very excellent. So you have to inform that with the university whether your university in which you are going to study will support you or not or giving you travel grants or something like that. And third is to represent your own country. It, this third one is pretty tough because you are as 
an individual cannot represent your country as a whole, no way. But to show how Indonesian people would react about particular things. You don't have to wear a mask, you don't have to pretend for everything, no. You just be yourself. But one thing is that integrity and understand different kinds of things that you are facing while you are in the United States. And the last one that I re that I learned from my friends and from my host family is that you don't ask, don't get. So if you need any help, ask them. And if you need something, ask them. They would be so happy to help. They are not cold blood. They're not going to bite you. So just ask. Ask politely. I believe that they will help you. And to those who have been selected to attend this Robert Scholarship, once again I would say congratulations. And if you come to the United States, make sure that you study well because you have to go back to your country and contribute to your country to develop it. And for some reasons, I would like to stay here to study. But then again, we have mutual understanding between two countries. You will represent your own country like I do right now. So at the end of your study, you have to go back for a two years visa. And oh, by the way, wish me luck to get a PhD in the United States because I like it. I like to go hard for it, but if I can't get it, I have to try another one. All right. Okay. Now, for you, everyone, congratulations for your Fulbright scholarship. See ya.